Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Mr. Miracle, The Source of Freedom, number one. But before we start, uh, I haven't been on my tablet in a while, this is weird. <laughs> I've been doing all, you know, phone videos. Uh, $4.99 graphic novel, fulfillment has already started. People should start getting it very, very soon, within days. Uh, that being said, there's uh, some left. Uh, technically, there's 80 left, but you know how it is. Some are going to be damaged, so... It might go for a little bit, and then we, as we get closer to, you know, the amount printed and the amount sold, it might be, like, temporary, temporarily shut down for us to re-inventory. But for now, there's at least a couple dozen that are, you know, easily available. So go check that out. Rock and Roll Ninja Graphic Novel. Um, uh, Matt is almost done with issue one. So the main uh, perk is a graphic novel out in December. But there's also one for just a floppy that's signed. Uh, and I think he's got two more pages to go. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, going to be on time. That's going to be great. And then uh, we may do uh, further single issues, you know, signed ones. Uh, so uh, anyway, um, I didn't buy this on New Comic Book Day, uh, specifically because it was Brandon Easton, who I find very boring. Brandon Easton's been around forever. Um, I think he, what was the Agent Carter TV show? I think he used to work for that. And originally, do you, you remember back in the day where you would just try to get into comics and they would just put you on anything? Well, now it's 10 years later and, and the blacks write the blacks, the gays write the gays. So uh, whenever I see something that feels like it's the blacks write the blacks hiring, I just go, look, I don't support segregation. Um, put this writer, who he's, he's okay, he's solid, put him on the character that he's best for. Don't. Oh, the blacks. That is so racist. If I remember correctly, he's set up uh, in the like way back in. The, he's from like the Jack Kirby days. And he doesn't qualify into the, you know, oh, they're turning all the characters black because it's woke. Like this is pre-established. This is pre-woke. That being said, I've flipped through some. He never seemed that interesting to me. So he starts off and he's doing a really cool uh, stunt. Uh, a vaguely similar stunt was done. I remember when I was in the National Guard, this is like 10 years ago, somebody jumped off a like almost near Earth orbit. I believe in the original version of Jawbreaker's Lost Souls, Cuffs was going to, no, the whole team was going to go up in a satellite. It was kind of like this situation. And they were going to, they're going to be like a near Earth orbit and then they were going to, you know, uh, jump, uh, you know, uh, like what, what do you call it? Halo jump from like near Earth orbit earth orbit but i ended up just making it a plane uh so i sometimes you have like it takes a whole page to set that up you just have them in a plane they open the side door so this one we got a you know standard mr miracle cool uh here's the problem brandon undoes almost all of the drama with jack kirby you know uh scott free was very confident uh but there would always be a point where he'd be like oh i don't think i'm gonna make it through this one and then you would cut and, you know, a whole building would collapse, and then he, he made it! But this one, he just seems kind of fine. In fact, when they do that, he's not going to make it. It's almost like other people saying it. He's, like, chit-chatting with his mother box, uh, I believe. And then he's just kind of fine. So, that's cool. And the art is it's solid. It's okay. Uh, but then, like, it's a black writer on a black character in 2021. Let's see how many pages before it becomes all about race. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, you don't want the world to know that Mr. Miracle is African American. Just say black. Just say black. <laughs> Has anyone ever been called black? That it is African American. And they're like, whoa, whoa. Whoa, seriously? Be better. Just say black. It's fine. He talks about that he, how he likes to be, uh, you know, masks because he's free. That's fine. But then we get in this really weird identity where he's like, oh, I totally understand. I'm half Jewish and half Italian and I always have to pretend to be one thing on one day and not like wh what? Escape artist. Deadly escapes. That's the core of this character. Like, we got six pages, and then it had to turn into every other black character written by a black writer in 2021. I know that identity can be a prison, too. 
He goes, and you're right about one thing. You can't pretend to know what it's like being a black guy in this world. Fun! So, yeah, so it's just like this miserable race despair, black misery. Uh, so he goes up and he finds one of the criminals from every ADT commercial. Uh, he, he's basically told, you know, your Q ratings are down in these metrics, so go, uh, go be a crime fighter and that'll help out. Uh, weirdly enough, like, in another, like, bad writing bit, uh, you're just gonna have to trust me. He's like, uh, hey, your stunt re went really well, but, um, uh, uh, boys ages 8 to 14, uh, are not watching. It's like, yeah, that age group hates stunts. <laughs> what the hell? That would be the top, you know, uh, demographic watching these stunts. So it, the whole thing was just kind of weird. It was obsessed with, like, grievance. At one point, he, uh, he meets a firefighter. So you see the art is good. But there's also weird things like this is an escape artist. So he's going to go be a superhero, you know. But he has super strength? Isn't he human? Why does he have super strength? Also, you're an escape artist. Grab something in an environment and make like a cool trap to put him in. Don't you? This is like a Superman thing. Yeah, it's a minor quibble, but whatever. Uh, so then uh, this is this is so... You know how they talk about working backwards from the punchline? This is working backwards from the grievance. So a firefighter goes up to thank him. You're welcome. Um, I don't know how to address firemen. Firefighters. We're not all men. But like this is so... It's, it's such like a TV introduction of a character. Like, what? A firefighter is a woman? That's crazy. Uh, so let's, uh, let's applaud two things. Number one. The side of her head is not shaved. Number two, she is straight. Uh, this is almost unheard of in a current climate in which 50% or more of black female characters uh, are gay. Uh, so then uh, I guess this is a version of a meet cute, except for um, they end up uh, going on a date. I'm going to skip a couple pages. And it's uh, horrifying. Like this guy, I think... Are, is he trying to say, like, uh, Miss? Oh, okay, yeah, of course we get the freaking. I'll read this whole scene. It's just awful. So, so there's a hashtag for him to take off the mask, which is weird because the whole point is he's masked. Um, he's like, uh, I'm a little perplexed by your refusal to take off the mask. You're not Thaddeus Brown, and this isn't 1969. Damn right it's not 1969, but it sure feels like it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Please look. And they actually have Psy. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so I brought this up a million times. When I was growing up in the 1970s and the 1980s, black male characters and in the real world, this was the rep. For black guys tough smart confident witty those are really great really really great and now almost every black male character is a little wimp or like this like woke sad sack damn right it's not 1969 but it sure feels like it sigh zero percent chance of stealing your girl and then we get his whole strident speech. It's exactly what you would guess it would be. Vito, I've saved countless lives. I've danced at the edge of the Earth's atmosphere. I control the powers of a mother box I barely understand. And yet, almost every white lady I pass on the street, even in broad daylight, surrounded by hundreds of people, clutches their purse as if I'm a mindless savage. Every white woman, and only the white women, and it's very specifically only the white women. And it's almost every white lady. Um, I don't know if you've been to a major city or any city in America in the last 30 years, but there's a whole lot of mixed people everywhere. There's a whole lot of evidence that many, many, many white ladies see a black guy and want to do things besides make sure their purse doesn't get stolen. She's probably about to pull out her cell phone and freaking ask for his freaking number. So then he goes on, on the date and it's freaking horrible. He is a complete egotist, uh, very unmanly. 
uh, just a horrible date. Uh, he just ends up bragging about himself the entire time. And finally, she cuts him off. She's like, I'm not in film school or the least bit interested in the inner mechanics of the entertainment industry. Maybe there isn't much more to you than a mask and a costume. And unfortunately, with assignments like this, it feels like there might not be much more to Brandon Easton than just being black and writing black characters. Uh, I would not say this story is awful. It definitely sets up things where you could stick to landing. But the lead is not heroic, not likable. He's a woke, self-pitying sad sack. And you almost forget that he's a superhero. He certainly doesn't act like one. So my question is just, who is this for? Who is this racial grievance and black despair for? Who does it benefit? Who's buying it? We know who's selling it. Is anyone buying it? So anyway, thanks for watching. 499 graphic novel. Still a couple dozen still available. Rock and roll ninja graphic novel. And I will have new comic reviews up all this weekend. Thanks, bye.